Why does it say that we're live? As recording. So I'll count down from 10 and then. Cool. So, yeah. Okay, so I'll inf I'll mute myself now and then I'll push broadcast. Just okay. bear with me. Great, so I think we are now live and recording. Um, I will just give a minute or two for everyone to sign in. I know it takes a bit of time to get to this part through Zoom. Whilst we're waiting for everyone to join, um, welcome to Supply Compass Flexport webinar. I'm Flora, co-founder of Supply Compass, and this is Christos, who is responsible for Flexport's UK business and building out its client base and operations here. Um, so today, big topic, technology in supply chains. Uh, there's a lot of talk about it right now, particularly in the last few months. Uh, so the intention with this webinar is really to be a conversation and, and, and unpick what does this actually mean to bring tech um, into you, for you and also into your business. Um, and so kind of move beyond those lofty words of, of technology and, and look at the kind of fashion production supply chain part from a supply compass perspective and freight forwarding from um, Crystal's perspective. Um, so one thing perhaps that we should say is obviously everything we say may not specifically apply to your situation. So this is really just potentially for you to take out some insights on, on, on what we're talking about. A little bit of housekeeping. Um, there is a Q&A button at the bottom, which is now live. So please do ask questions. We will be looking at the Q&A box throughout and, and hoping to answer um, those questions as and when they come through. Um, we are also recording this, so we will share a recording of this. I know it's a hot day, so I, I imagine some people will prefer to be outside, but you can share this with any of your team who, um, who, who have done that. So I think we should kind of kick off. Um, Christos, do you want to start? Who is Flexport? What is freight forwarding? And perhaps why do uh, businesses today need a digital option? Yeah, thanks, Flora. So Flexport, we're, we're a digital freight forwarder um, and customs broker. Basically, what we do, we move goods internationally um, on behalf of customers by ocean, air, rail, truck, whatever mode, really. Um, and the way we think about this is like freight forwarding is like a relay race, right? So if you're moving goods from a supplier in China to let's say you know a retailer in the UK the, the the documents and the physical goods themselves might be passed on between something like 14 different parties in that chain before they get from their um, origin to their destination and the kind of challenge in the industry is like that relay race happens in a black box and what that means for fashion brands who are who are you know very often the importers in this scenario is that they get very little visibility into what's really going on in that upstream supply chain as their goods are kind of making their way from the from the suppliers to to their retail location and fundamentally what flexport is you know we have taken a different approach to this we execute this process on a on a digital platform um, and fundamentally, what that means is, you know, our, our clients get more visibility into what is going on in this process. Um, they get better data to make decisions with. And that enables things like, um, you know, better management of inventory um, or being able to prioritize shipments to hit product launch dates because, um, you know, you can just you can just see what's going on. Um, so that's 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 kind of what we do in a nutshell. Um, and, and I suppose let's, 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 let's talk about supply compass. So I know that you work a lot with, with fashion brands. Um, and I know that you are a production management platform. Tell us what, uh, what that really means. 
yeah, I think um, just to kind of us in a nutshell, we are very much that point when, um, you know, we depose the goods at, we go up to the freight point. So it's really the connector to uh, a solution like uh, Flexport. Really, we have kind of three core parts of our business. At the heart of our business is our platform, which we call a product development and production management platform. It's quite a lofty phrase, but actually it really describes what you do on it. Um, and then beyond the platform, what brands who work with us can get is access to um, trusted, vetted supply chains um, around the world, but, but really predominantly focused at this stage um, in India and Portugal. Uh, and then if you work with our supply chain partners, that also you, you um, get, it gets managed by our team of production and supply chain experts. So it's kind of outsource on demand production expertise that plugs into the platform. So really sometimes, you know, how it's sometimes easier to see it is it's a sourcing agent blended with a PLM software, blended with a workflow software kind of rolled into one for fashion brands. And the key part is it's for their manufacturers as well. And this is really where the, the key part has been missing in the industry for so long is a collaboration tool between both sides. And that's something that I'm sure we'll get on talking about today because it's, it's the same challenges that exist in, in freight forwarding. Why it's needed, um, really, I don't need to tell everyone that managing production is extremely complex, particularly when you're producing globally um, out of your own country. Um, different businesses, different teams, different processes, all these activities and approvals all happening at the same time um, with very little standardization and across many many different mediums so really the key challenges that I'm, I'm keen for us to tap into talking about today is uh, collaboration and communication this is really the core of where the challenges lie it's fragmented it's generally offline or if it's online it's not talking to another thing that's online it's not really interconnected and there's this kind of distorted and disconnected flow of information um, Time cost quality, in order to be leaner with your teams, um, deliver products faster, you need real time collaboration and, and in order to see cost savings. Um, and then something that perhaps we'll touch on at the end of today is the sustainability part, access to new partners um, with, with sustainable credentials, the traceability part, and importantly, the data and, and metrics element of it. Um, so yeah, that's us in a nutshell. Um, I hope that's concise enough yeah yeah i think you know one 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 thing i found really interesting like since since we started talking flora is like we, we we're kind of in different parts of the of the supply chain right but but fundamentally that bit about collaboration and kind of connecting suppliers with retailers is something that seems to be very common um between what we do even though we're in we're in sort of very different aspects of the supply chain Definitely. And I feel like I know we've discussed this before is that, you know, all, there's a lot of solutions that have been built to solve specific needs for a specific team or a specific function of the business and actually stepping back and thinking, no, wait, the whole system needs to be connected to each other. We need to connect to Flexport. All of this needs to be one digital system, really. But yeah, totally agree. Yeah, exactly. And, and we will we will get into this later, as you say, but like that, that's often the thing that that kind of also makes it can make it a bit challenging, you know, for, 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 for brands to sort of think about how, how, how do I employ technology? How do I employ a technology like this? Um, you know, that's not sort of like, um, yeah, specifically used for one function in one part of the business. Um, Definitely. I mean, what, like, what advice do you give to brands when they, you know, it is a massive, you know, when you think, okay, where do we, where do we start with this? What do you, what do you tend to say when, when someone, when a business says that to you? Yeah, I think, I, th I think for us, it's about like looking at what the key challenges are that, that brands are actually trying to solve, right? I think that sometimes, you know, and this, this is sort of big reason why I wanted to have this conversation on this webinar, right? It's like um, digital transformation is kind of a big, big topic that everyone has and it feels like this kind of big unwieldy thing. Um, and it's, it's, often, it's often tricky for people to decide where to start. And for us, like the way we sort of talk about it is, um, you know, let, 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 let's understand the areas of supply chain that, that you really want to improve. You know, like, are you, do you feel like your intake processes um, are good enough? You know, are you, are you struggling to find additional suppliers? Um, do, do, do you feel like you've got enough visibility into your transit times? You know, are your inbound schedules into your warehouse kind of working or, mm. or are, you, are you experiencing a lot of cost and inefficiency there? You know, it's really like technology to solve a problem, I think 
rather than this kind of big like we need to change everything and and go from where we are now to like this big digital ecosystem it's not really what how we see yeah. it I, and I, I think actually what we've we've actually started saying it during this period is it's not just to solve a problem. It's also it can be a positive innovation to help you get ahead as a business. And I think also seeing it as that as well. And I think we've seen businesses go to look to technology to disrupt their business model, for example, look to made to order and things like that. So I think that it doesn't always need to be to solve a problem, but it is really important to understand why you're doing it in the first place. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's really true. Really on that. So let's um let's 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 kind of with that in mind, let's let's think about first how um technology plays a future in supply chains, right? So let's talk about let, let me maybe ask you first. So let's talk about what what role do you see for technology in the future of global supply chains? Yeah, I mean big big question. Um so I'm probably just I'm gonna tackle it just from obviously my experience within the fashion supply chain side, so particularly the kind of that and the demand side. Um I mean, I've been saying this since we started Supply Commerce four years ago. It's it's not this nice to have, it's a necessity. And I think the last three months has really shown that. And I've seen, you know, we've had so many more business, businesses come to us during this period, you realize actually it's no longer a nice to have. But I also think it's really important for, you know, fashion industry, for instance, is a very creative industry. We work heavily with designers and, and really getting creatives and design teams to understand that technology is not at odds with their work that they're doing and actually it could be an enabler of creativity and they could embrace it and, and, and kind of work differently and I think you know it's you've seen the innovations that have happened on the e-commerce side of things last mile um, the digital front end has has jumped you know leapt on kind of really far ahead and, and I, I'm, I don't want to call it the back the back end because I think it's the no. it's the core um, but really it needs to it needs to catch up um, fashion is behind other industries in terms of supply chain um, kind of technological innovation um, you know even though these companies are about creativity and design at the core a fashion business is essentially a supply chain and logistics business mm. um, and it's just about getting excited about that so yeah I mean I don't know what you from from your experience on your side what would you say yeah absolutely I think I think as well you know it's like uh, as it as it always is at the moment it's important to acknowledge what what kind of COVID has done right for for this situation you know I think like how 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 we saw COVID play out um, you know through our data looking at the kind of global supply chain is like as a as a sort of series of shocks right um on the on on the supply side you know initially with like china shutting down and then on the demand side as countries went into lockdowns and 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 kind of shocks are like not good for supply chains right especially when um things tend to be set up for kind of high efficiency right so like there there, there, there has been in stable times there's been a kind of greater push to be more efficient to greater scale and i think that what 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 COVID has sort of shown very starkly is that is that like actually that that creates a relatively fragile system you know now now you see the conversation shifting much more to kind of how do we get more resilience into the supply chain how do we get more agility into the supply chain those questions are different and I think it's um it, for me it's like one of the one of the drivers that that we definitely kind of see uh, um for for brands turning and sort of thinking more about digital solutions yeah I think I mean what what's interesting is we we definitely see kind of tech being at the heart of this kind of rebuild and reemergence at the back of this kind of three month period that we've been through. Um, I mean, we're 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 starting to see, um, for instance, people experiment with kind of digital. When I talk about technology, I'm also not just talking about. Obviously, we'll talk heavily today about process and communication, but also technology in terms of like digital products and people did creating digital samples and testing those and then actually making the physical product out the back of this um so yeah i think i feel like it's it kind of can, technology is a big word yeah and i think one of the, one of the things that, that sort of i found very interesting about what what you guys do because i think it's it's like so much in the same vein that we approach freight is is that point we made about you know it's not uh it's not necessarily a technology just used um but by a brand for their own purposes it's kind of technologies that connect um, you know, suppliers, retailers, um, logistics vendors, these sorts of like control tower type type technologies yeah. are kind of more more relevant now in global supply chains, right? Because you have 
kind of this big, you know, think about global supply chain, it's like a very big network of interconnected right. partners. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they, and they all have their own priorities and ways of working. And yeah. I think, um, you know, what, like what's interesting about your solution and that's, that's kind of very similar to ours is like, it's very much about giving people a control tower for that system. It's like connecting this system, not yeah. so much, you know, for example, for us, you know, things like warehouse management systems are kind of very typical logistics, but that's, that's to do with, you know, efficiency and data of a very, very small subset. Um, so for, for those for those people listening who don't necessarily know what like a digital control tower, can you maybe just yeah. explain that a bit um, as a kind of? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I guess um, the the difference between kind of digital control towers and other digital type technologies mm. is that they are trying to connect. They're trying to kind of give visibility and control over a larger network with multiple parties in it, right? Yeah. And that is a that is a fundamentally different approach to. Um, how how other technology investments are made, right? Because um, you know it, it's not just one company making an investment to improve the way that they do things. It's it's about sort of changing fundamentally how um, two companies work together, right? Yeah. And that, that for us is why we we think of Flexport as sort of um, you know s software for trade, right? And trade is very much about those two parties mm -hmm. having the same understanding. And for us, it's it's just as important. The supplier experience on the platform as it is the brand experience on the platform um because that's where the value really comes from right and i think for you it's kind of very similar principle yeah and i think that you know someone's just asked a question saying why do you think the fashion industry has lagged behind in innovation and development compared to other industries and i think it's because it's so complicated and i think that it's because the solution is needing to be built for so many different it's not just one-sided and it's not even just two-sided it is multiple as you say control towers um, that need their their own solution that is built around like we spend so much time testing our product on different user types in within the supply chain and at a brand side to make sure we're building something that works for them because what we build for a brand is not necessarily what's going to work for a manufacturer who probably wants a mobile first experience for example um, I don't know why I mean what, what are your thoughts on perhaps why it has lagged behind I mean obviously you don't just work in fashion yeah. um, but you do the fair amount in that space yeah I, 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 we don't we don't exclusively work in fashion we do we do have a fair amount of fashion clients obviously um, I think actually you know one of the areas that, that that we're kind of involved in a bit is sort of fast fashion right in the in especially in the UK and if you think about the digital transformation that's happened there you know it's very much on the kind of consumer side right it's, it's like data that has helped um you know faster reaction to trends right but but it's almost like you know and 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 that development of fast fashion was like very very rapid um but it never like from the way we see it the supply chain side of it was maybe not as much of a problem right like it was a stable world um, you could react to consumer trends very fast, um, you know, and do, do amazing things like turn around designs in a week, get them air freighted over from, from a manufacturer in China and fulfill demand. And so um, certainly from the supply chain side, that, that, that maybe that requirement for technology, you know, like just wasn't as high on the agenda. Right. But if you take that air freight example, you know, look at what's happened to air freight since, since COVID, you know, with, with passenger traffic coming out, that accounts for 50% of freight capacity, you know, because, because freight, freight travels in the belly of passenger planes. So now you've got a situation where that, that world is far less stable and you have to find other solutions um, and you have to be a little more detailed about um, what's really going on in that supply chain because there's not that sort of ready flow um, that's, that's, that's already there. So would I be right in saying what you've said there is really interesting is actually that almost like the innovation hasn't been needed in the supply chain in the same way, but now, it, it, like you talked about earlier, the fragility of, of, of this fashion supply chain in particular has really been exposed. And the way to be more resilient would be to digitize those sub part of those processes so that I mean, ultimately, you can you can you can see where perhaps your risk lies. You can you know be more reactive when. I mean, what would you say are some of the biggest benefits of going digital? I mean, I don't want to kind of jump ahead. We're obviously going to get into more detail later, but a kind of you know turning to technology within the supply chain space. What would you say are some of the benefits of it for from your side? 
Yeah, I think I think from what from what we see in the supply chain, you know, you're talking about digital solutions first and foremost, it's about um, visibility and data to drive decision making, right? You know that that has to be fu fundamentally the first thing that it gives you. Um, and I think like that's another thing that can be a bit counterintuitive because um, you know sometimes you see these surveys of like what what technologies are people going to invest in, um, you know, and you sort of see like blockchain and and like you know drones, right, coming high on the list, but actually you know, some of the more kind of powerful things is like, well, what's actually going on in my supply chain? And if I know what's going on in my supply chain, I can make better decisions, right? Um, so I think it's that data and visibility, um, you know, and then, and then you sort of layer on top of that, right? It's like, then you can collaborate better, um, you know, between you and your suppliers using, using that data. Yeah. Um, then you can execute faster because now you've got, both got visibility to data, you're collaborating, um, and you can just, you can kind of take faster decisions. Um, I, mean, I, I know this, I, I know this collaboration thing is, is def definitely one that you're, you're kind of into okay. and I will give you a chance to talk about it. So why, why don't you kind of give me, give me collaboration from your view. Well, I will, yeah, no, I, I would, I'd love to talk about that. And I think, I think what it really comes back to your mention of drones and, and blockchain there is that it's, it's actually a conversation about getting the basics right at this stage. Like we're talking about communication, collaboration. Well, you know, this is this is this is stuff that's not revolutionary necessarily, but it's the basics that aren't right. And if you don't get the basics right, there's no way you can layer on those exciting technologies in the future. It's like let's not run before we can walk. It's a kind of journey to get there. But I, I mean, I definitely, you know, the 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 single source of truth. We, you know, we we. I'm sure we've said that many times and it's moving away from kind of fragmented decision making, this idea of togetherness. Um, and, you know, the, this, I think something that we really, um, really are trying to achieve at Supply Compass is, is standardization. Um, and there's something so lacking in the fashion industry. Um, everyone has a different process, every brand, every factory. Um, so really, if you want, if you want resilience and if you want, you know, to, to be less fragile in these times and to get products to market faster and be more reactive and do smaller runs, like you've got to, there's got to be a really good level of communication across the network. And I think something that we've, you know, we work a lot with, um, setting up new supply chains for brands and right. the need like you know to, a brand could come to us and tomorrow we could have set up a new supply chain for them they could start something immediately but in right. order for that to work successfully we've done years worth of work for us to get to that point where you know at that factory knows exactly everything that's coming through supply companies it's standardized they can make you know they get perfect sample right first time um so it's yeah i mean it's back to the basics a bit again. That, that that i think is a really interesting one right because for us we see similar parallels to that in that you know our, our platform deals with freight right but in in onboarding suppliers onto our platform in having logistics vendors on our platform in having um, retailers on our platform it it, it, it kind of does the same thing around um, you know offering options for people that maybe you know would otherwise take a long time to set up like you say right um, you know for example you may be moving, you know, typically moving air freight, right, let's say, and you have kind of manual processes around moving air freight where you're, you know, talking to your freight forwarder. Um, but but on, a, on, a, on a kind of platform, you know, switching over to ocean freight or looking at what an equivalent cost of ocean freight might be and comparing it and looking at it side by side, transit time of this option versus transit time of this option to kind of have always moved to air freight and suddenly evaluate this ocean freight option probably would take a lot of time, right? Um, but when your data's in there and the, the vendors are on there, you know, for us, it's like you kind of look at this stuff side by side and you get that sort of speed of options, right? Because the whole thing about data and visibility is like, it's, it's, it's extremely useful to have it. You also have to have options that you can actually act on. Yeah. Right? And I think that's, that's often one of the things with technology platforms that's like, maybe doesn't get said as much, right? Is that you've kind of got more options to hand you kind of know what your choices are in any given situation. Um, yeah. You can kind of act on. So we've got um, we've got another question here. I know we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna jump into yeah. next. We're gonna talk about sort of how how technology um, you know specifically so helps to solve problems in the supply chain, right? Um, but why don't why don't we kind of? I know we were gonna talk about sustainability. Why don't we just jump into it a bit with this question? So the question is how how apparent is end to end transparency on supply chains developing? with more focus on sustainability. 
great question. Um, I mean, I can I can tackle that from from my experience with supply compass. I think um, tr transparency and traceability is something that we are working really hard towards, and it comes back to that getting the basics right in order to easily map and trace the supply chain. It needs to have a digital core again because finding you know authenticating and being sure that that really does come from that source you need you need technology to do that otherwise every single product with every single supply chain with every collection that a, a, one brand for example makes it's too costly and too time consuming so a lot really technology is is the thing that allows a lot of the um key requirements within sustainability almost to be scalable affordable and fast so what we're really working towards i can only really answer from my experience this question is is to allow a brand almost like by the default of designing a product in our platform as a default the supply chain is is traceable and transparent for us it's easier um, with certain supply chains than others we're very focused on the organic cotton supply chain and we can get a real great degree of traceability there um, but for me technology plays a key key role there and and you know again back to the point about blockchain it's often the the tool that's cited most when talking about traceability and transparency but again it's like let's move beyond pen and paper in the supply chain we need to get beyond excel we need to you know there's a journey to get there so yeah yeah i mean well whilst whilst we're on that kind of sustainability topic i know one of the things you talk about is kind of efficiency and sustainability going going hand in hand which i find kind of interesting so do you want to explain that one a bit more yeah and this so my business partner he's an he's an engineer by um by background and he is all about time cost quality and he you know he so strongly believes and this is at the core of our business when we look at sustainability we have obviously it starts with great supply chain partnerships the design element designing your product with the right materials etc and designing for durability but the process is such a crucial part of it and it, it touches on many areas so for us i mean what we do at the moment um is you know things that you can measure you can track however many samples you ordered season on season look to reduce you know exactly where every part of your product has come from in the region um, and I think also if you if you tie in for us sustainability is not just about the environment it's about people and if you tie in process with that it really comes back to good buying practices and that means no last minute changes once your fabric has been ordered and it's in the factory that is not only the worst thing for the environment but also the people who've made that it's the biggest waste of resource and so using technology to encourage and train both sides to kind of behave in the right way it comes back to that kind of structure and standardization part which is you know i think something that we're really excited to um explore is things like just even something as basic as tooltips building into the platform so that when you try and make a change if you try and make that change over email your factory is going to say yes because there's no computer says no in the middle whereas if the computer actually says no you can't make that change and this is the impact on these people in this area and the and the environmental impact then people will think twice because if you've been told something and you know, if, otherwise it's kind of ignorance is bliss. So yeah, that's yeah. my uh, two pence on it. And on, on um, you know, how, how important is having data and metrics? Because obviously, you know, we, we kind of led off by saying, you know, we think that, um, that that's a big part for the role of technology and supply chains, right? Um, the, the, the application of technology leads to better visibility and better data. How does that data play out in the kind of sustainability example? I mean, it's, it's, it's really important. And I, I just kind of to rewind to how it is currently working for a lot of businesses who, who measure their impact. It, they, there are some great tools out there, but generally it's a relatively costly and cumbersome process. Um, and this is something that we want to move towards it being an easier and a thing for anyone in the team to do. Um, so, yeah, I think we, we, we look at it, um, so we kind of collect a mixture at this stage of manual and digital data um, that can be used to, to measure impact. And our aim is for it to all be digital so that it's kind of quick and easy to calculate. But we, um, it's kind of looking at supply chain information, product information. So even just like, for instance, if you design a product through our tech packs, it has the material location, the material weight, the material finish, all of this really important information that's very crucial to, in order to measure the impact of a product. Um, and so it's making that really easy and accessible to the right person because often it falls on the sustainability team to go and gather that really manually um, so it's again centralizing it so that all, all team members can be also empowered to, to think and act on sustainability as well yeah 
Yeah, I agree. I agree on the kind of understanding the impact point, right? Like you have to start there. Um, you know, you, 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 in order to kind of be more sustainable, you have to, I think, um, in order to be, uh, you know, transparent about it, is to like really understand what you're doing now, right? And I think, so what, what one of the things that, that, that kind of we do along these lines is um, we, we calculate the um, carbon emissions uh, of every shipment for, 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 our, for our clients, right? And we show on our platform, um, you know, the overall carbon footprint um, from from shipping um, yeah. of, of clients that use our platform, right? And that's just something that's uh, kind of a feature there on the platform that allows people to really understand their footprint. Yeah. Um, you know, and and um, and it's just it, it's just a way of kind of bringing that that data of what the impact is very very easily to people. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's not it's not like tremendously difficult to 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 kind of calculate if you if you have the sort of like supply chain data. Um, yeah. around the kind of vessels or air freight that we do. Um, but what, that, what, yeah, go on. No, no I was just going to say, is that um, something, I mean, because obviously, yeah, calculating the impacts of a product is there's a lot more, it's, it's a complex thing. But is that something, I'm interested to know, is that something that was kind of driven by um, businesses that you're working with? Or is that is that the industry in the freight industry? Is that where it's kind of moving towards? Is that more of a norm now? Or were you kind of leaders in that space of, of measuring the impact? Yeah, I think we're def we were definitely very, very early in that, right? I think it's, you know, number one, it's, it's very hard to do without kind of structured data set. You know, yeah. once you've got a structured data set, okay, fine, you can do it, right? But like, if you think about an industry that, that is sort of done with phone calls and emails, it's very hard to kind of do with that data set. So where it came from from us was, yeah, was, was really driven by, you know, brands that we have that, that, that kind of it's, it's important to them. They want to know. Um, you know, might, might be kind of part of their mission to focus on reducing, reducing their footprint. Um, yeah. And so, and so, yeah, we felt it was important to kind of make the data available. Um, you know, with, with that, we, 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 we do, do things like offer, you know, offset options, right? So we work with, we work with kind of approved environmental um, partners that, that will kind of do offset projects. And so we, we offer the chance for brands moving freight with us to yeah. kind of, um, pay a donation for projects like that as a kind of offset fee, um, you know, or if, or, or if it's something that, um, that brands want to get into further, we kind of talk about how to optimize your shipping to maybe reduce that carbon footprint. Ah, so what does that, what is optimizing your shipping to reduce your carbon footprint? What does that look like? Yeah. You it's like, you know, if you think about ocean, right? Like yeah. if you think about ocean shipping, one of, one of the things there is, is like how utilized are the containers that you're shipping? Right, mm. because the carbon footprint of moving a container, um, whether it's like empty or full, is sort of min minimal difference, right? Yeah. But getting more products into that into that container, um, obviously everyone knows that's sort of better for costs. Yeah. Um, but it also has that impact on carbon footprint. And so, you know, one of the one of the insight tools that we have on our platform is being able to show our customers the the actual utilization of their containers, right? And that's data yeah. that they can look at. Um, on an individual shipment level or over a time period and it enables them to understand you know fundamentally how efficient is my shipping um but 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 also it, it's definitely one of the big drivers of of kind of how um how how sort of you know how much carbon footprint you have on, on a sort of per product basis I feel like there's there's some real similarity. I know you're talking about ships and I'm just thinking as you're talking there about material w wastage and I was just thinking that the same, you know, the the same kind of thing happens when brands for example designing products um they buy x amount of fabric and then there's this much wastage and that waste actually has a use to itself. But if you don't know how much fabric you're wasting, this is where this is where technology is so beautiful because it can come in and it can say you do realize you've got like you say with your capacity in the boat, you can say you've actually wasted 30% of this fabric here and there's tool i mean there's a really cool company that we love called queen of raw and they do exactly they they take a lot of um dead stock fabrics they host like in warehouses and um they have it's either brands manufacturers or warehouses and they um kind of reallocate that and i, I mean is that something that you do you look to then fill that space or do you then empower do you encourage the brand to then look to fill that space how does that work it can't it it kind of depends on your shipping mode, right? Mm -hmm. So when 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 uh, when kind of people are placing um, shipments for their own for their own containers, um, then really it's about sort of presenting that data, 
mm. uh, so that we can work with the brand to understand like how can we help you to optimize this um yeah. you know as, as as opposed to kind of um you know part, part container solutions where people are sharing a container and then it's really about actually actually optimally filling that container yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting so um, we said we so we said we we kind of touched a bit on the sustainability question around kind of problems that that technology can solve. Um, we said we kind of dive dive in a bit deeper on um, kind of what what problems does technology solve in the supply chain. Yes. And um, it, let's 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 kind of try to make this as real as possible. Right. right? So let's uh, let let's sort of take it from the perspective of something simple like you know the life cycle. I say simple, but it's probably not. Um, the the kind of life cycle of a of a t shirt, let's say. Very right. simple. So, Very simple t-shirt, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so we take it from the perspective of life cycle of a t-shirt, you know, produced in China um, and imported in in into the UK and delivered. Let, let's, let's try and kind of paint a picture for people for like where technology actually solves a problem in that actual process. Yeah. Um, so I guess like, uh, you know, let's 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 start with I'm I'm going to kick it off with thinking about placing an order for a shipment from your supplier, right? Yeah. So let's say you know you've you've kind of placed your booking for your shipment you know you know that the, the shipment has left perhaps yeah. and then you know if you think about the difference between not after that you get this massive gap in time you know the t-shirts on the water you don't really know anything after that until it's kind of hit the hit yeah. the warehouse you're maybe getting a booking appointment you know a sort of day or so out from the warehouse after that or you may know that it arrived at the port um the difference between that and kind of whilst it's on the water you know really understanding like what what quantity of which SKUs are actually on that container? Um, how is that container tracking? When is it going to arrive? And sort of getting that picture in real yeah. time, right? Yeah. You know, if you can imagine the difference between world number one, where you sort of have this big black spot and you're just making a lot of assumptions, yeah. um, versus world number two, where like you really understand where it is mm -hmm. and the impacts on something like intake planning, right? Yeah. So you go from kind of making a lot of assumptions around intake planning on what quantities you've really got and when they're going to be coming in to suddenly having this data source that says, this is, this is what your intake plan will actually look like over this time period. Um, you know, and that, that's when we talked about making decisions, that sort of really then gets you into a different set of decisions around like, well, you know, for them, for the future shipments, right? Do I want to kind of speed this up? slow this down am i short stock and i need to find ways to accelerate my shipments or i'm i've got you know quite a lot of, lot of stock of something i need to kind of slow it down um it's kind of like pretty, so you pretty, have real uh, control it's almost like where you otherwise have no visibility and no control you actually are able to kind of you know or plan ahead or manipulate not necessarily manipulate but have something where it's a month of let's just wait and see so that gets there let's right. hope it gets there That's right no Right. I think that that's the thing. It's like sort of knowing, knowing exactly where things are and what, what quantities you have at all times in what has normally been a bit of a black spot. Um, in that enables you to kind of make a different, different kind of different level of decisions um, that maybe, you know, you weren't sort of able to do before. Right. Or, or like quite often, quite often brands don't necessarily, you know, um, consider that that's possible. Right. It's just an assumption going on that like, inventory is what I have in the warehouse. Now, you know, doesn't need to be right. You could consider inventory as everything that you have in the warehouse, plus what you have on the water, plus what you have in the supplier, but it's the digital solution that kind of gives you that visibility. And if you can manage inventory at that level, you know, the, the kind of range of decisions that you have to make there are, are much broader than, than kind of not knowing about it until it hits your warehouse. That's interesting. I, when you when you said this kind of like black spot, I feel like so many businesses have been kind of accepted so many black spots from the design right through to delivery, the six or nine month process. And actually, it doesn't need to be that way. Not knowing where stuff is, having to chase stuff. It's like that that can be a thing of the past when you bring technology. It's this idea of like you can actually know where everything is at every point. You don't need to sit there. I mean, when, often when I speak to businesses, I, you know, what's your biggest challenge? Well, what do you, what keeps you awake at night? And it's always that they kind of put in their heads and think, is my product actually going to arrive on time? Because the implications, if it doesn't, are huge because that means no sales and lost customer, you know, lost revenue. So the implications are massive. And yet 
people are putting up with not knowing when it's so so important um you know when you buy something online you track it every single you know right. as a customer you see every single step it's at when you buy it why can't fashion businesses for example have that kind of control up until that moment that they give that control and visibility to an end customer yeah and it's kind of it's kind of you know like not not knowing the range of decisions that you can make you know without having that data right because sort of when, when you talk about final mile you know there was there was there was a time when um you know there was there was no tracking of final mile right it's like someone gives you a call it turns up you get a small amount of lead time on that yeah. but then you think about what's happened with technology in final mile giving you know all kinds of milestones of where of where your delivery is mm -hmm. think about the level the, the number of decisions that, are, that that consumers are now able to make from that right like for example, I'm not going to be in, move it to tomorrow. Actually, my neighbor's going to take it. Can you give it to my neighbor? Can you just leave it on my doorstep? Um, you know, it's like, it's, uh, it's a kind of whole range of decisions available that make people's lives easier that maybe they didn't realize, you know, they, they, they could make because the, because the kind of data wasn't there. And it's sort of the same thing on the supply chain side. It's like, you can only make these decisions if you can see what's going on. Yeah why would you not want your life to be made easier? But I think that going back to that point we get earlier, we said about kind of digital transformation, it seems like this massive, huge mountain and you've got to, you know, don't, like not getting overwhelmed by it. But ultimately seeing that the, the it's, it's maybe a bit of short term pain and learning something new if the long term benefit is that all of the, you know, that, that is possible, what you're describing there to be in control of everything that you're, you know, you're looking after in your, in your team. Right. So, so talk to me about, um, what what kind of designing a t-shirt looks like in on the on, on the supply compass platform versus maybe what what uh what it would be traditionally so maybe i'll go with the traditional i'll go with the um the challenging the challenging process first so i think people often think t-shirt that's easy just here's a picture let's pull that together well there's pretty much the same amount of people you know bringing together to make that t-shirt than there is for a shirt or any other item um so in in terms of just kind of an overview of where some of the key challenges lie in that process i mean firstly it's a long process in terms of it goes through many stages and you have you know for instance with a t-shirt you will have obviously your cotton farm then it goes to ginning then it goes to spinning then it goes to knitting and then dyeing processing before it gets to the bulk production unit but then obviously your labels have got to come in and then your poly bags and your swing tags and your barcodes and all these things that have got to arrive at the same time just to make this t-shirt and that is a complex process already not only is there very little visibility for the for the brand um at, at over that process um, but the the methods of um, communication um, they kind of you know you've got you've got in that process I described there you've got creatives you've got producers you've probably got finance team approving costs you've got logistics you've got marketing teams wanting to know when that product's launching you've got buyers negotiating on price you've got product developers so many people have come together at different points to give in their feedback their input but that feedback input changes all of those approvals are happening through an absolute multitude of, of of technology, software, paper, pen, whatever. It's like a sample being sent, then it's approved in an email, then it's set in an Excel. And mm. it, it can become quite a messy, hard to control process. But I'm often, it's often miraculous how at the end of the day, even with manual processes that exist for many businesses, it, things still arrive somehow miraculously kind of on time and in shape. But it, it, it's a kind of stressful process that leads up to that. And I think you know, for example, I mentioned my, my, my co-founder who, who's an engineer and he, the reason why kind of we started Supply Compass is because, you know, he, as an engineer, there is this set kind of Reba way of building a building. You have your engineer, you have your architect, you have your builders, not a million miles away from it takes to build a product. Mm -hmm. Obviously building a building, some people build buildings super fast. The reason why they can do that is because there's a standardized way of working. It's done even if there's not technology, there's a set process and good communication. Um, so if, if that t-shirt example, you know, it's if, if there is a set, I mean, I can now go into potentially like the way that Supply Compass has tackled it and t-shirts are our, our bread and butter um, because it's not as simple necessarily as it looks um, but you know we look I mean really communication as I said at the beginning it's again it's not a revolutionary part of it but we've approached the challenges and problems and we've really unpicked when we've spoken to thousands of business fashion brands and manufacturers around the world and unpicked when they talk through their challenges and problems yeah. it 
always comes back to communication, miscommunication or something like that. And so we thought, right, how are the different ways we can look at it? And I think first and foremost, as we've discussed before, it's this, you know, single source of truth, one workspace for all of those parties. You know, that's the same for, for Flexport, isn't it? You, you've got lots of different, I mean, how many different types of user do you have um, on your platform? Like who, comment, like traditionally, who is, who is signing in, who's using Flexport? Yeah, I mean, you know, for, for a kind of a sing like a let's just say on the perspective of a single brand, you know, you could have anything from, you know, one to a hundred suppliers, um, yeah. just for that single brand. You know, yeah. you've got you've got um logistics carriers in different parts of the process. So that, you know, could include like truckers and warehouses and ocean carriers and air freight partners. So um yeah like you know uh, there's also customs of course he's got yeah. to click customs so freight freight forwarding as i said like this relay race picture you know that we have so many parties involved in in kind of moving a shipment um that that's that's sort of really what what kind of yeah. create, led to that lack of visibility in the industry in the first place yeah. i think one of the things that you talk about around um you know miscommunication being being a big issue yeah. uh, i i i think is like one of the kind of very critical things of of kind of any any part of the supply chain you know like again if we go back to the t-shirt example right yeah. let's just think let's just think tangibly about you know okay so i've placed i've placed an order right for my for my next t-shirt shipment and yeah. i decide now uh you know that i don't i don't have enough stock right yeah. on hand right now in my warehouse and i need to accelerate this shipment right Let's just think through what that would look like kind of getting something like that done right so the first thing you've got to do is like get the current status of the shipment uh, which if you don't have available you know is like that's your first series of kind yeah. of emails and and spreadsheets and report updates then you you're gonna have, email what you tell them say where is you literally just email someone where saying, where is yeah or phone right yeah. like phone or email where is my shipment um so you've got to understand where it is you yeah. got to then get into discussing, you know, what options do I have to either kind of speed this up or slow this down? You know, how do I compare the different timing op timings of these options, the different costs of these options? Um, then even once I've done that, I've got to like perhaps go around aligning it with all internal teams, you know, yeah. and say like, actually, I'd quite like to, you know, me, me as a merchandiser, logistics team, I'd quite like to accelerate this shipment, right? Yeah. Um, and then there's also, then you've got to align it with like the supplier and the logistics vendor and so get everyone else on board on, on kind of speeding this up. And then lastly, you've got to take your, whatever your new plan is and kind of put it into your intake plan and put it into your inbound plan. Yeah. You know, we talk about this, we talk about that, 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 that could be that you talk about hundreds of touch points, right. Yeah. Around this idea of actually I'd, I'd quite like those t-shirts a little bit earlier. Right. Yeah. And so I think. You know, that's, that's why particularly we see, um, you know, when people use Flexport platform to manage shipments, you know, very dramatic reductions in the amount of time spent um, sending emails, um, yes. phone calls, sending around spreadsheets, because just in that example, you can, you can kind of imagine the swell that's going to happen. And to your point around miscommunication, in all of those steps, the probability that like someone got slightly the wrong end of the stick somewhere is quite high. It's, and so so you're cycling around again it's almost impossible for someone not to get the wrong end of the stick and i think that you know we see people so attached to email and i love email email is great but ultimately it is not fit for managing really complex supply chains where you need you have lots of individuals involved it's great for team emails it's great for emailing someone where you have a long thing to say but it doesn't work when you know i think this the key part where i see it gets fundamentally wrong is just tagging, labeling and codes. Like most businesses we work with don't necessarily, you know, you have a code for your product, but every single part that feeds into that product essentially needs a code. Because if you receive a lab dip or a strike off or a, something to approve for that process, and it hasn't got a code with it, if you need to record it in the digital space, how are you going to record that? Really like that um, slightly lighter red um, one that you sent me. Great, I'm just going to upload a picture here. It's like right. everything. And but that again, that comes to also getting that's the standardization point, getting factories and supply chain to have a standardized way of co coding and labeling things. So by the time the brand gets it, you know, ultimately we are dealing in a digital to physical loop all the time. You know, you have, you get something physically, it needs to be recorded digitally and the same with the factory back to the brand again. So that's a really, you know, some of the biggest challenges are around that and, and just bringing good uh, kind of structure and practice to that. And it kind of links into 
approvals again like i'm approving this 2154 I, I mean, it's not necessarily like the re most revolutionary change. Right, and that's right. why I kind of get brands to see is like, just like, let's start with even getting the basics because you'll right. see, you'll see a huge reduction in miscommunication and confusion from, from your fact sheet. And often what we hear brands say is that we say, what are your biggest challenges? And they're like, product quality, product quality and delays. And we unpick where that comes from. We look at their process and, and we understand that actually like that, that, product didn't come out as you wish because actually what happened there was a miscommunication over something really really critical there obviously there is bad product quality and that's a different conversation altogether but something not being made as you ask for it is can be come down to bad translation of a of your idea yeah i, I agree if, if, if i think of parallels in in moving freight you know like often um often the kind of goal that's actually trying to be achieved here is either sort of on time in full right? Like getting stock on shelves, getting stock on the site, or, um, you know, just, just, or maybe people think about it in terms of availability measure, right? Yeah. Like how frequently am I out of stock? Mm. Um, but, but sort of what, what, what can really drive that is like, you know, it's not just placing more or less orders. It, it's like, well, if we get more understanding of what's, what's kind of really going on in that process, yeah. um, as I said before, like it enables a whole new set of levers that you can pull. Um, kind of make decisions in in your supply chain to sort of optimize those metrics yeah i think the other thing here is like we haven't touched on so much yet is you know what what um the other kind of problem area that technology helps to solve is is not just about real-time visibility real-time data real-time workflows that we've sort of talked a lot about but it's also a bit kind of reporting after the fact right yeah. So it's, um, you know, with technology platforms, you get, um, you also get historical data of what's really happened, right? And that enables you to um, do analysis and pull out insights mm. that otherwise might be time consuming. And for us, like one of the biggest kind of, one of the most powerful uh, sort of wow moments we have quite often, right, with the insights is, is um, we can show landed costs, you know, of our t-shirts. Right. So for our, for our, for our t-shirt example on our platform, um, you know, with like a single click, we show the landed costs of the t-shirt from different suppliers, from different transport modes at different points in time. And doing that sort of thing is like, you know, you get a really good repository of historical data with yeah. good insights and then, and then allows you to, um, you know, to, to, to basically understand like, where am I not optimal? Right. So it's not just about the real time side. It's about also the data that you're building up that you can go and you can go and make better decisions around um, yeah. you know, because you have it. Yeah. So being informed before. Yeah, I think we often, you know, we, we give costs up front. Like we work really hard with we've got like cost database and we base it on other orders that we place with other, with other brands. But even being like, this is what your unit cost. Co this is your unit cost. This is plus we, we give it more from an FOB perspective, but often we'll calculate it to be landed because ultimately, yeah, your product is the landed cost. It's not. And I think there's so, you know, we've seen. We see businesses who are, who are calculating so they kind of break down the product in, into so many different components into obviously costing materials, open costings, but actually ultimately they need to know what it costs when it lands in that, when it gets to their warehouse. And that's, that's really interesting that that's your most, so did you say it was the most popular blog part on your site that people are? It's, it's, it's certainly one that, especially with fashion brands, yeah. is, is a kind of thing that, that, that people are very interested in because you know, the, we're kind of aware of how much calculation time it takes to put something like that together um, mm -hmm. normally. And, and, and kind of as soon as you've done it in a report, yeah. um, it's now obsolete, right? But yeah. for us, you know, because it's like the live data platform, you can cut it a million different ways yeah. um, today, tomorrow, a month from now, compare year over year, whatever you kind of like. So we've got a, we've got a few yeah. questions rolling in here. Um, so the first one, I, I, re I really like this first one. So can you speak a little bit about how technology helps with production forecasting, uh, forecasting orders and resource calculations? So for me, like there's, there's one, I'm just going to jump in for us. Like there's a bit of this, I really like, which is but the, the, the one I really like is at the tech, the impact of our technology, you know, we see on resource forecasting at the warehouse, mm. right? So, you know, warehouses, they're inbounding goods, um, they're, they're like stocking them, um, picking them to go out to customers. You know, if it's a, if they're fulfilling for 
um, stores or fulfilling for online. It, it doesn't matter too much, right? The kind of inbound scheduling is, is quite very often the kind of bottleneck of, of warehouses, right? And that comes from low certainty, low visibility into both when those deliveries are coming into your warehouse and mm. what's on those deliveries, yeah. right? And, you know, you know, as, as for someone who's running a warehouse, they are trying to plan shifts of resources of people to unload containers. And the difference between knowing when it's coming in and knowing what's on it and not, um, the, the kind of use of your use of your resources is like totally different. Yeah. So that's for me, like a really tangible example of how, you know, having that, having that, that technology helps you to make really good resource calculations um, yeah. at, at the warehouse side to do that in value. Amazing. I'm going to add, someone just actually dropped in a question. I rather than answering the same question as you, I think this is a really, really good one. How much does it cost to implement the supply chain solution? Does everyone in the supply chain need to implement the technology and pay? One yeah. of the problems in fashion supply chain seems to be that margins could be quite thin. I can give I can give a, a quick. Okay. I think I think it's really um, important to see the cost savings that technology can bring in the long run. You can shave off money from just by by being more reactive. For example, if you you know if we take the one I mentioned earlier about digital um, samples and you know designing a product around so let's say you you create a 3d sample you test it you know how much demand there is for that product you produce exactly what your customers want and need you you could have saved 30 percent of stock that you may have overproduced or or equally underproduced so just that and that that saving is by far you know what you're talking about um, thin margins 30 percent of of that stock that you could have over purchased and then tried to get rid of at the end of the season so i think it's about going beyond those margins and thinking and standing back and looking at the business as a whole standing back from the unit cost and looking at your landed cost and where you can be more efficient in the process you can have smaller teams you don't need as many people managing however many um collections for example and, and then thinking empowering certain individuals in each team to have that um like like um crystal said you know the ability to um see costs across the business that means a designer can be informed on the cost right at the early start of the process therefore they don't need to wait for that person to sign that thing off and i think it's basically if you have full visibility and, and everyone in the, in the team can know you know what to do and where and everything like that then I, I, I think you can really see huge savings in time and yeah I think you know that that that's something that we we, we totally agree with as well you know in the flexible platform like it's um you know in in freight forwarding often there's a lot of focus on you know just just what the freight rate is right yeah. but what we see with with people coming onto our platform is like you know quite, quite often you do that and then you realize oh wait that's not the issue the yeah. issue is actually you know, um, the timeliness of my containers means I'm racking up spend in detention and demurrage. The issue is actually I've got 10% of containers not meeting plan times and therefore not um, not hitting stock availability deadlines and therefore I'm losing sales. Um, yeah. The issue is like, you know, the amount that the kind of wasted resources in warehousing by not inbounding containers on time. And if you look at those things, yeah. it's like often kind of blows out of the water this sort of fractional, and we, 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 we sort of call it like the tip of the iceberg of freight forwarding, where right? yeah. it's like you focus on the number that everyone focuses on, but beneath it, you've got this massive cost structure that yeah. you don't have control over um, yeah. without getting visibility into it. And I think I think just that we like have this calculator, which sometimes we show brands that they want to see, um, which is this is what you're actually paying for your product. So we it's that exactly that we are, this is your unit cost, but this is actually the size of the team that it costs to manage this. It doesn't need to be that big. Um, and I think it's yeah, it's moving away for you guys from the freight cost and us and the unit cost to seeing the bigger picture, the kind of complex cost structure. And I think actually to your point there about the question where it says the cost to implement. I mean, for for us, we've spent a, a, a long time. I'm developing a platform that is easy um, to implement and not really costly for us like a lot of the legacy PLM software for example can take years to, to bring in and by that point the person you brought in has probably left and the implement implementation process is slow and it costs to onboard we don't charge an onboarding fee to set up with a platform I don't know about with, with what it is with Flexport yeah no as as, as is, is kind of similar in that way in the sense that you know we are we are providing a freight service like mm -hmm. any other freight forwarder um 
we have, you know, it's just that we do this on a digital platform, mm -hmm. right? So the, the thing for us is like, we believe that doing it on a digital platform, it, it just makes us more efficient. It yeah. makes it better for the customer. So we don't think of it as like, you know, a service that you charge additionally for. We, we, we kind of make the platform available because that's how we work, right? Yeah. And it's working like that, that enables us to actually, um, you know, perform, perform the way, the way that we do. I think that's a great uh, end to the, to the webinar. Um, thanks everyone for joining on a hot day. Great turnout, some great questions there. I hope it was useful. We will be sending this around in an email, um, a link to, to listen for those who couldn't join. But thank you and have a lovely day, evening, wherever you are. <laughs> thanks everyone. Bye.